Hey, welcome back. It's Friday, which means it's Poetry Friday, and I'm going to read a poem by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is Sonnet 14, If Thou Must Love Me. If thou must love me, let it be for naught, except for love's sake only. Do not say, I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought that falls in well with mine, and certs brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day. For these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed, or change for thee, and love so wrought may be unwrought so. Neither love me for thine own dear pities wiping my cheeks dry. A creature might forget to weep who bore thy comfort long and lose thy love thereby. But love me for love's sake, that evermore thou mayst love on through love's eternity. Elizabeth Barrett Browning is sometimes dismissed these days as a sentimental poet. Um, people tend to focus instead on her husband, Robert Browning although she was much more popular than he was in her life. And yet, in spite of the fact that this is a fairly simple poem, and it's a poem about uh, a sweet topic, I don't think that it should be fully dismissed as sentimentality. She's interested in this poem in what keeps love alive. And she's also, to some extent, critiquing poetry that praises in a loved one uh, the loved one's physical features, or even the loved one's voice or way of speaking, or even the idea of someone as a receptacle for love, someone who, uh, whose tears I can dry. The problem with those definitions of love is that they don't last forever. People change. And it may be that you really love the way your loved one scratches their nose when they think, but that same habit may become an irritation years down the road. Or maybe you love your loved one's waist size, and yet that may not stay the same forever. Instead, love needs to have a kind of permanence in and of itself, and to be fed from something other than superficiality. So to be fair, this sonnet actually is a pretty interesting psychological examination of the, the issues of love. It's a lot less about feeling and sentiment than it is about digging deeper for something, something more permanent. I think it makes a nice compliment, perhaps, to a study of the five love languages. If you've ever studied the concept of love languages, it's the way each individual person has their own way of understanding, exhibiting, and receiving love. The better you understand what makes your loved ones feel loved, the better you are able to love them. So if they like compliments, then complimenting them will help them feel more loved. But if compliments don't do anything for them, but rather maybe spending time with them or helping them work on projects makes them feel more loved, then the time you spend complimenting them is mostly wasted. You should instead focus on the things that actually make them feel loved. Instead of searching for superficial things to love about your friends and your family, you should be cultivating love and feeding the love that you have so that it can be a permanent thing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next week with another poem. Have a great week and happy Poetry Friday. Bye-bye.